Catherine was born and raised in humble surroundings in Neath, South Wales. When Catherine was a child, she used to like to perform quite often. She would often get onto what we call the poofy, a little stool, and give us a little rendition of I'm a little teapot. <laughs> I remember Catherine from a really young age constantly singing. I, d I don't think I remember a time when she didn't. She went to the local church primary school and knew she wanted to be a singer when she entered a talent competition at the age of just four. Catherine Jenkins, I hope. Yes. <laughs> The special song that I taught her for the talent show was called Going Down the Garden to Eat Worms. Everybody hates me, <laughs> going down the garden to eat worms. Big crumbs for the fat ones. Baby. She enjoyed learning it, and uh, it was great to see her perform. <laughs> At just seven years old, Catherine won a place in the church choir and quickly became head chorister. I thought she was a little bit young, you know, for it all, but, uh, but she wanted to do it. And it, it was such a good opportunity, really, because you learned such a lot of discipline in the choir. Catherine's voice really stood out from the rest of us from a really young age. It's a really pure, beautiful sound, you know, kind of, kind of classical, almost boy soprano-like cathedral sound. Singing was becoming Catherine's life, and her father, Selwyn, was her biggest supporter. Our dad was, was really involved early on and because he was at home and my mum was at work, he was the one that you know, took us to piano lessons and her to singing lessons. I think he encouraged her so much, you know, and uh, you know, told, you know, encouraged her to believe in herself. But when Catherine was just 15, she received some shock news. Her dad was told he had cancer and hadn't long to live. When, when Dad died, I mean, I think when you're that young, it, you probably kind of, you kind of grow up overnight and you can't really imagine what it feels like unless you've gone through it, I suppose. Um, you can't help but be wrapped up in your own grief a bit, but, um, I mean, it must have been terrible for her as a 15-year-old. But I think it made her um, a stronger person and uh, she always believes her father's watching over her, and so I think she feels that, uh, you know, she's always got his support there. He's definitely an inspiration. His memory lives on, and, and it's really driven us both on, I guess. What, what do you think your dad would have made your success? He never knew, of course, what happened to you. He put all that work into your early career, but never knew what happened? Um, I, think he's, I think he knows what's happened. Um, he would have, I think he would have loved it. I don't know if he knew or if he, you know, if it was just that he believed, you know, believed in me, but he did, he did always used to say, you know, one day you're gonna be on This Is Your Life and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, he was, he was really supportive. What kind of man was your dad? Very funny. Um, I think that's the thing that everyone will say, you know, always joking, which is, I think, why I like to have a laugh. But I think being older, sorry. <laughs> OK. After all this time, you don't think you're going to get so upset. Because um, he was older than my mum, like 23 years older. So I think him being more worldly wise, more settled in himself, made me and Laura kind of feel more settled and, and grounded and, you know, just constantly felt that, you know, that love and protection from him. He was never critical of you, really, was he? Or no. never punished you? He just... Well, just... he did punish us, but... Yeah, but you know, like, he wouldn't let you watch Neighbours. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, but that was the worst punishment of all. <laughs> <laughs> you were 15 when your father died, which is probably the worst possible age, and you were about to do exams and stuff. What, what do you remember of that whole period in your life? Um, I remember on the Sunday when they came, when my mum came to tell us that he was ill and he couldn't come to tell us because he felt like he was letting us down. Um, and it did, it really happened very quickly, you know, it was, we were told it was going to be, you know, like a good few months at least. And then, 
And then it just went so fast, you know. I think it was two months until he actually passed away. It was really quick, cos mm. then I was, in, um, I was in school, and it was towards the end of school, um, before we were leaving for our GCSEs um, study period, and I got taken out of biology, and somebody said, oh, your, your auntie's here. And I knew then, you know, I, I, I walked down the corridor and she met me and said, you know, Dad's gone into a coma, you need to come to the, to the hospice, cos he was in a... He was, like, in a unit where the family could stay. So we stayed... We stayed by his bedside overnight and got a chance to talk to him and, you know, cos it did happen so fast, I hadn't even said goodbye. Um, and... And then we went off to stay at my auntie Joe's house for a little bit of dinner the following day. And we were in the car, coming back. I felt this urge, like, I so wanted to be back in that room with my dad. Um, and we couldn't get there quick enough. And I walked down the corridor, and as we walked in, they said, he's just passed away. And, you know, since then, people have said to me that maybe things like that happen, you know, they, they, they hold on to a time when it is better that they go, and maybe it was better that me and Laura weren't there. Would you feel he's here now? Yes, I think he's telling you not to be too hard on me. <laughs> 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 no, he, he is. He's... I feel him when I... Uh, you know, just little things happen. Like when, when I was in Australia um, and I stepped out on the Sydney, you know, Sydney Opera House and I was so excited to be do, doing that, but my dad had been based in the Navy in Australia and he'd always talked about us going out there as a family. So it was really upsetting to think, well, I am here now and I'm here without dad, you know, and it's, it's times like that. But um, I have a word with him and I say, come on, don't make me cry on stage, don't... You know, don't let me be near this. And it might sound crazy to some people, but, you know, it, it keeps me going to think that he is, you know, seeing some part of it. One thing that was absolutely clear from that video is you were one of the most precocious little madams I think I've seen in show <laughs> I mean, That picture of you bouncing around stage. How old were you? Four? Four. Singing about your worms or whatever it You're was. You're the first but... person to see that, you know that. My mum world never... exclusive yeah, video. world exclusive. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious. I mean, you had the... I mean, the confidence of a... of a 20-year-old. It was extraordinary to watch. I remember the walk on to the stage, and then when I started singing, they all started laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... But did you like the feeling? Was it, was it a real rush? Like, suddenly... You had an audience, yeah, and you felt this rush of excitement. Yeah, I blame it all on my mum because she chose that song, and they all laughed and cheered, <laughs> and then the seed was planted, and that was it. Do you ever sing that worm song now? You're not going to do it now, are you? Go on, let's have a little rendition. Come on, <laughs> pull yourself together when you're ready. Nobody likes me, everybody hates me Going down the garden to eat worms Big ones, small ones, <laughs> fat ones, thin ones See how they wiggle and squirm You just bite off their head <laughs> Suck up the juice and throw the skins away <laughs> Nobody knows how I survive on worms five times a day <laughs> As a, as a worm myself, I thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents made lots of sacrifices for you, didn't they? Yeah. Whatever income, you know, that they had spare went on lessons for me and Laura. You know, singing lessons, piano lessons, dancing lessons. If I got into a competition and got to the final, you know, there were... You usually had to travel to that and there'd be expenses. And never once did they sort of say, well, we haven't got the money to do that. And, and in actual fact, I'm really grateful that they weren't the usual pushy parents. My mum and dad kind of tried to hold me back a little bit and sort of say, well, if, do you really want to do this? This means you're going to be away from your friends all summer on, on this summer school. Are you sure? I just loved it. I, I did. I was... All I wanted to do was sing. That's all I've wanted to do. I can't remember a time before that. Your parents' support was about to pay off big time because you were about to get your great chance in the big city. 